Hi guys, I'm Anissa and I'm back with another video today. I'm gonna do the Borathon wrap up. First of all, I'd like to say sorry if the lighting is terrible. It's completely dark out and I've only just gotten home from work. It's the time of year when it's dark at five, so yeah. I've tried to get as, as much lighting in this video as possible, but anyway. On to what I've been reading. First off, I managed to finish four books. Three of them, I'd already started them um, beforehand and I think I may have read about 50 pages of each of those books. So the total number of pages I've been reading over the whole week was 1107 pages. Um, and one of the books, I'm slightly unsure if it fit the challenge. Um, it's not my own book, um, so I don't own it, but I did pay for this unlimited service, um, which I pay a fee for every month, and I have access to like 10,000s of books on there. On there I listened to an audio which was The Hammer of Thor, which is the second book in the Magnus Chase and Gods of Asgard series. And this is a series that follows the Norse mythology. Rick Ryden usually writes a lot of series about different sort of mythology, if you, if you didn't know. And Magnus Chase is this boy who, one of his parents is a Norse god. Um, and so yeah, it follows him as he sort of figures everything out and I'm not going to go too much into detail because I don't want to spoil anything but one of the best things about Rick Ryden's books is that he adds so many interesting characters. He is really good at adding uh, diverse characters that you don't see a lot of in other types of books and, and he writes really, really humorous books as well. I really, really enjoyed this book. I think this is my favorite book of Rick Riordan ever. This is definitely my favorite series. Um, and I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I was really, really happy with it. And the narration is really, really good. Um, at some point, I want to collect all of Rick Riordan's books so I can read them as well. But because for now, once in a while, I've only listened to the audios of the books. And that's what I want to keep doing as a progress through the series. But once I'm caught up, I want to get sort of um, collect his books because I really really enjoy them I mean, I, and I definitely know that I'll be rereading them at some point. Then I also uh, read most of, <laughs> save for those 50 pages, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. This, is, this was my brother's copy and he, I handed it back to him so that's why I don't have the copy right now. Um, I really enjoyed it. I I have to say first of all, I have always always loved the movie Jurassic Park. I watched it the first time when I was 8 uh with my brother because he was obsessed with the book and the story. Um I think he'd already read it at the time it came out. Um and so he persuaded me to watch the movie even though I didn't understand English at all back then and I was only 8 so I was was I wasn't really old enough to watch it, but my parents let me watch it, so it wasn't any big deal. But I really enjoyed it already then, even though, as I said, I didn't understand English. I was really fascinated with the dinosaurs and all those scientific things. They sort of was explained from from my brother. If I was some, if there was something I didn't understand, he would ex he'd explain it to me, and so that's why I always enjoyed watching it. I didn't have any problems understanding what was going on. And so I read this book finally um, and I was a little scared and apprehensive about it because I have loved the movie so much. So I was scared of being disappointed by the book, even though I know usually books are better than the movie. But I have my own, you know, characters because they were portrayed this way in the movie. And a lot of those characters were very, very different in the book. And that's one of the things that made me maybe not like it and love it as much as I liked the movie. Um, I did like the movie better and I'm happy about that because that means the movie was brilliant. <laughs> um, 
especially the Hammond character, um, the brain behind all of the the whole Jurassic Park thing. I have this grandfather figure in my head when I picture him, this loving grandfather figure, figure, and he was not at all that person in the book. He was horrible and horrible and only had his mind set for money and power and all of that. I know my brother said that it, make it makes it more realistic, but I don't like that sort of... I want my ham, the Hammond the way I want. The way I see it. Um, luckily, Malcolm and Grant were more or less the same. There were definitely differences, but they were more or less the same. And those are my favorite characters from the movie. Um, so I'm, I was happy about that. Um, the children were good. Uh, Lex was a lot younger in the book than she was in the movie. She was the older one in the movie and she was like four or something. I feel like she was four or five years old in the book. And whereas Tim was the older one, I think he was around 10 or something. Um, but I definitely enjoyed the kids. It didn't matter that the, the age difference was a little different. Um, one of the other things that made me give this book a lower rating than I want than the movie <laughs> was also that um, all those scientific things that were explained especially from Malcolm which I, f I find super important to the story and also all of those how, how it all came about was all explained in the movie and maybe I found those parts a little boring because I knew these things and how they came about and so those sections were really really slow um, so if you have not watched, for some reason not watched the movie, and you have not read the book, I would suggest reading the book first and then watch the movie afterwards. I don't think you'd be disappointed by either if you do that. Um, and if it's if you have have already watched the movie, I would still recommend reading the book because it was really really enjoyable and you did get some other aspects of the story that you didn't get in the movie. And overall, I gave it a four out of five stars, so I still really enjoyed it, but it wasn't a five star book as I thought it would probably be if it was like the movie. Um, and after finish that book, I finished book four, three and four in the series of, of unfortunate events. This is the, the White Widow and the Miserable Mill. And I was a little, I don't know what it was about this one. Um, this is my least favorite of the book so far, and I've seen that everyone hates The Miserable Mill. Um, when I looked at the, the, the ratings on Goodreads, but I like that one better than The White Widow. Um, um, I think it was a lot, little slower, this one, and this one was more back to what was before, but still I didn't love it as much as the first two. So I think I, I'm ending on about 3.5 stars for this one and a 3 stars for this one. These are super fast reads. They're children's books, so they have really large fonts <laughs> and pictures in them as well. Um, but I like the way they're written. I think the, the, the author, Lemony Snicket, really has an interesting way of, of narrating books. Um, I like the fact that he says something super fancy, at least for, that's a fancy word for kids that they may not understand and then afterwards he explains what in, in general terms what that specific word means and I think that is a really interesting way to to write a book and it definitely keeps one interesting interested and I understand if a lot of kids like these books. Um, yeah. And lastly I started a bit on Fire, the second book in the Graceling trilogy. I think I read 20 pages, so, and then I stopped. <laughs> I could have probably read some more, but I was like, it was yesterday evening and I was like, I couldn't finish it anyway, so I stopped reading. And so I'm gonna try my best to finish it, finishing it during this week, because from Friday, I believe, the sixth, I don't remember when. <laughs> I have to look that up. But I think it's from Friday and two weeks ahead. 
uh, the tone table will start and I don't ha can't use that book but I can use the other library book so yes but this was all I read for the Borathon let me know in the comments down below if you read any of the any books for the Borathon and what's your favorite thing about libraries um do you visit it visit them often or do you preferably buy the books um I love buying books but I also love supporting the library and I love that I have a library that I can go to and get some free books every once in a while when I don't have the occur the economy to afford buying a lot of books um and also there's a lot of books there that I probably would never f buy physically buy but I could read them and then maybe if I like it I'll buy it later on um but maybe books that I'm I'm, I'm uncertain about I don't want to spend too much money on and that's a good way of using the library, I think. And yeah, this was all I had for you today. Goodbye!